Hi, I'm Clever Ghoul, but you can call me Nikki. Welcome back to the channel. I've been wanting to make a pin using beads for so long. I've just had this idea in my head of a beaded pin. So this week we are making a beaded anatomical heart pin. Now there are so many different ways to do this project. And if you've watched me at all, you know that I did not look up a single tutorial on how to do this. I just went for it like I tend to do. So if you wanna do this at home, I think I give you a pretty clear way of how to do it. Having said that though, there are things that I would change having done this project once. So you might wanna look up on Pinterest a more thorough account of how to do this. I know means is this the end all be all or only way to do this. I just want to be really clear about that, that this is kind of an experiment. So with that being said, let's get into it. I used one sheet of red felt, this box of assorted glass bugle and seed beads, clear Beadalon Supple Max monofilament cord, Beadalon Big Eye beading needles, pin backs or safety pins, I used the latter since it's what I had on hand, and an embroidery hoop. This one is 6 inches, but you can use whatever size works best for you. Additionally, I used masking tape, snips, fabric scissors, a piece of chipboard, and hot glue. I also added optional details using embroidery floss and a sewing needle. I roughly sketched the exterior of an anatomical heart a few times before I liked the main shape. Then, while looking at a reference picture, I thought about how I wanted to use color to both add highlights and shadow, and also to add lineation and separate the anatomy, basically using color for depth and outlining specific details. I decided on four main colors for the beading. The pulmonary artery would be mostly light blue, but with dark blue shading around the edges. The aorta would mostly be red, with darker red shading also at the edges. The bottom portion of the heart would have a dark red outline with a red middle, intersected by light blue representing the great cardiac vein running through it. First, I cut out the drawing I had just made as close to the outline as possible. Next, I took a small piece of masking tape, rolled it up, stuck it on the back of the drawing, and placed it on the felt so that it wouldn't move during tracing. I then carefully traced around the main shape with a pencil before removing the stencil and freehanding the sections I had laid out in the drawing. Once done, I placed the piece of felt in the embroidery hoop, adjusting until the fabric felt taut. I cut about 12 inches of monofilament cord and triple tied a knot at the end, leaving about one inch of a tail. Then I pulled the needle through the back of the felt and began adding in the light blue bugle beads on one of the sections. Annoyingly, the bugle bead openings weren't wide enough for the needle, so I had to push the needle through the fabric, take the needle off, thread the string through the beads by hand, and then re-thread the cord through the needle so that I could go back through the fabric to secure them. Very annoying. Once the light blue bugle beads were on, I added the dark blue seed beads to add the shading to the bottom of that section. I didn't have the same issue with the seed beads as I did previously, so this section was able to move much quicker. When each row of beads was done and the needle was on the back side of the fabric, I would flip the hoop over, do a small stitch partly through the felt, and then tie off the cord to the tail I had left behind when I started the row. In larger sections, I would do three to five beads in one stitch so that they were flush to the felt and going the direction I wanted them to. I decided to finish the light blue sections first since I wanted to finish dealing with the annoyance of the bugle beads that I mentioned earlier. After that, I went in and finished the shading with the dark blue seed beads. I continued these steps throughout the entirety of the project. Once the blue section was done, I put those beads away and pulled out all the red beads. I found some other multifaceted and star-shaped beads that matched both of the red seed beads I was going to use, and I decided to incorporate them to add a little more fun and visual interest. I continued going all the way up, adding a few darker faceted beads in some of the shadow areas for extra depth and dimension. Once I was done with the beading, I realized that the felt was heavy and floppy. I had a feeling this would happen, so I decided to add a stabilizing element. I took out a piece of chipboard, traced that same stencil drawing from earlier, and then cut it out to be slightly smaller than the actual stencil. I undid the embroidery hoop, and with fabric scissors, cut out the heart, leaving a large area around it. Then, on the back side of the felt, I placed the chipboard and made a note of where to line it up before adding hot glue to the chipboard and attaching it directly on top of the tied-off monofilament cords, thereby securing those knots and stabilizing the fabric. To hide the chipboard and add a backing to the pin, I cut out a new piece of felt that was large enough to match the first piece of felt, added hot glue on top of the chipboard I had just glued down, placed the new felt on top of the glue, flipped the pin over so the beads were face up, and pressed down to secure the backing. I wanted the pin to have some sort of border to it, and I kept picturing a running stitch going around the heart, so I pulled out some black embroidery floss, cut a piece, and separated the strand so that I would use two strands thickness throughout. I took a pencil and lightly marked where I wanted the outline to be, and then I began to do a running stitch, starting from the bottom of the heart and working my way all the way back. I intentionally didn't make the stitches precise, as I like more of a rustic handmade look. Once the stitching was done, I cut off the excess felt, first with the fabric scissors to get the larger general shape, and then with smaller snips to get some of the detailed areas. Now it's time to make 
make the pin, well, a pin. You can use a pin back here, but I didn't have one, so I had to figure out a method with safety pins. Remember, I can't go directly into the back with the safety pins because of all the hot glue I used when attaching the backing earlier. So here's the solution I came up with. I cut an excess strip of felt and hot glued the edges of that strip, attaching it to the center of the pin back, leaving the center of that strip open so it could act almost like a belt loop, only more taut. Then I added the safety pins. The good thing about the safety pins is I can always move them around. And if I want to in the future, I could cut off this loop and add an actual pin back. Now that the pins are attached, it's time for the reveal. Here she is. I am so pleased with how this turned out. Now, if I was going to do this again, there are a few things I would do differently. I think I might make sure that I use beads that are completely opaque and don't have any transparency to them. And then I might use a different felt color or a different fabric altogether just to, I don't know, see how that works out. I also think that you can read it when you look at it and I think it's easier to read in person that it's a heart. But what I think I would do in the future is maybe add black or different stitching right under the areas that I had drawn in with the pencil just so that there is kind of a shadow under each section. I don't know, I'm not quite sure about that. Maybe I need to lump my beads tighter together. Maybe I need more variety in color. Anyway, for an experiment, I think this turned out pretty well. I have so many different design ideas that I would like to try with this project in the future. Rainbow aliens. I think it would be really cool to do like a big monstera leaf with beads, which would take forever, but could be really cool. But I would like to know what kind of design you would make with a project like this. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out over on TikTok and Instagram at cleverghoul.yt and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!